will say that the same things happen naturally. And so from just a landscape perspective, uh, I'm not talking about what people do in the landscape, but what nature can do itself. You, a landslide in eastern Kentucky, which is how the landscape evolves there, the creek erodes sediment so down the hill, sediment slides down the hill, exposes new rock, layers to the <coughs> Landscape creates the issues and the, and the hazards that you have to face when you have life. So, email is a great way to help me if you have questions. Um, I have an office number and I can put it up here because I rarely, I'm sitting there and answering the phone. I'm not doing so. But, Very quickly, and I know I should have said it, but I'm not actually going to say it. When you're looking at the rock, <laughs> nobody's perfect. What, what is the, well, the, the kids ask me. places for saving dinosaur bones because we don't get a base in there. There weren't mountains coming up next to us to force the crust down, to put a base in, to wash rocks into it. You know. And so we were just sitting there, happy, minding our own business. And so from when the Appalachians finished in the early Permian, let's say, until Cretaceous, to save them. So when an animal would die, it would be at the surface like um, 200 years? 200 years. A long time to be stable. And we were. Now, uh, who, who's got grown on a farm? Okay. Cow dies. Cow, you know, drags back to the back of the farm. Okay. Well, we didn't even do that. We just didn't go in that corner of the farm for a while. <laughs> um, the vultures would 
circle back there. The, 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 the vultures would circle back there for a while. So basically, the next season, I had to go back there and it would be just about as much. Okay, and it wouldn't you, it, it already wouldn't be articulated well. You know, it would be cut on the top. You know, kind of scattered around. I come back two to three years later, and I might find a skull and a couple leg bones, but everything had been chewed, gnawed, weathered away. You know, I could come back and dig all I wanted. To. It wasn't being buried. It's being consumed. It's being consumed. And so, Kentucky in the Triassic Jurassic was just like that. You drop a dinosaur, it's going to go the way. something to bury it. And so a lot of the big dinosaur finds are actually in river deposits that are quickly covered. I mean, they literally, some of the dinosaurs are literally covered. <laughs> well, when you find them with, their, with the neck curved back, that's literally right after rigor mortis is setting. And so these things are getting covered fast. You know. But they haven't been disarticulated yet. So I mean, a, a scavenger is going to be on that tearing apart almost immediately, you know, within a, a day or two, for sure. And so to find intact neck back like that, it died, went, went stiff, got cut. And so, I mean, that's it's a very unique circumstance to, to preserve a dinosaur yeah, like that. It's, it's very unusual to say that. So. It makes an interesting question there, because I, I don't think that's something that came out of they sort of assume that these dinosaur bones are really big for them and that's where the dinosaurs lived as opposed to the dinosaurs could be all over the place. Oh, There's only certain places that we can find remains of the dinosaurs because of the geology. As you said, all goes back to geology. Of course. <laughs> Every county there, just, if you go out in their backyard and dig up the breakfast and everything, so they just want to know why, why can I find this that's older than the dinosaurs, but I can't find the dinosaurs. Because everything that's younger than that has been eroded away. Is the other answer, and so the layer where those dinosaurs would have been right here at Lexington is somewhere between 400 and 800 meters above your head, and so that's where the tabletops were that long ago. Right now, the earth surface is being eroded a few meters per million years, okay, and it's been doing that for 200 million years, faster now than it has in the past. So you add all that up. 400, 500 meters. You know, it's not pretty long. It's long gone. So, Drew, if you had a, some middle school kids at your disposal. Uh, yard work. <laughs> <laughs> it would be yard work, and it would, yeah. Uh, they could wash windows. But also, you know, what, what would be a good entree for them into, you know, I mean, I used to have kids bring a rock to school. What's this? You know, that, that, that natural curiosity, and that was a real teachable moment, but, you know, starting from scratch with somebody, what's something pretty cool to throw out there to them and just spark their interest? My, my go-to exercise with elementary kids uh -huh. is I have a bucket of rocks, and they're all everything from kind of thumbnail sized up to kind of fists fruit sized chunks of rock. Uh -huh. A whole range of different rocks that I've picked up all over the country. And I just let each kid grab one. And you're going to borrow one of my rocks. And then have them look at the rock and have them hold up their rocks so everybody else can see, look around the room. And okay, how can we describe these? How can we sort these into categories? And they inevitably come up with rough, smooth, big, small. Somebody eventually comes around to color. And then I talk about what they're made of. I have uh -huh. to bring that one in. And then yeah. we talk sort of into what they're made of. And then we talk about where they came from and, and what formed that rock. And, we, and I, each time I split them up into different groups. Okay, you guys are small, medium, and large. You guys are rough and smooth. And, and you guys are sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. And I tell them the story. I start with the igneous rocks and then I make them. See, this piece looks like that piece and that rock. So now it's become a sedimentary rock. And this has become uh -huh. a morphic rock. And so I weave all the rocks into this. It says to us, little genealogy. <laughs> well, it is. Yeah, <laughs> right. It is. Um, right. And, 
It's a fiction. I that. And so I, you know, kind of walking through the. Okay. You know, that's what I do with middle school kids. I think with, with middle school kids, the things I try to do is be like, okay, this is different from this. How they behave. So let's take this chunk of shade and throw it in water. And we'll come back to it. And, and this piece of limestone, and we'll throw it in water, side by side. We'll come back to these. We'll come back to these next week. The shale's going to start to crumble. The limestone's going to sit on. And things like that. And just start to kind of, okay, let's, let's squeeze it. Let's let's try to can we push this the same way? And what's going to happen? Um, what happens when we mm -hmm. do something to it? And okay. Then, then take that into. So here's why it's important to build. Here's what it's happening. Okay. Well, I was going to bounce this idea. I don't know if this is doable or not, but you said you had a bucket of rocks from all over the place, you know, different parts of the country. Would it be feasible to challenge them to say which of these came from the backyard? I mean, which of these came from right here and, and which are not? Are they, do they not have enough information to base that kind of some of, them are going to pick, some of them are going to figure it out. Okay. Some of them are going to have a creek out back are going to have picked up rocks at the park uh -huh. and uh, in the local gravel is local and so they, they've paid attention to the gravel and they'll notice things like yeah. So a few kids will do that. not. <laughs> Marv, I mean, they're like, you know, you think about what's in the lava rock, what they might pick up with. Oh, a flower no, bed. No, yeah. Flower yeah. Bed. It's going to be very different. Yeah, they have all kinds of crazy stuff coming out of the flower bed. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, you know, then you're going to have some kids yeah. that are, that are I am often dealing with kids here around Lexington. And so at one school, I'll have a whole class full of kids that are like, oh, yeah, this is just like this, just like this around at home, you know. And, and they'll pick up the Lexington fossiliferous yeah. rock and they get it. And then there's other part of town, kids who live in concrete and brick, nothing looks like what they're used to. Being, yeah. You know? And so, and they don't connect the gravel that they see where the sidewalks come apart with the rock. They, they uh -huh. don't make that, it's different. Okay. And so um, some kids will just get it exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Some of them, yeah. it, you got to walk them there. Now, okay. they don't want you to walk them there, but you got to walk them there. It's all about knowing your student. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions for the group? The watershed or being at that in terms of geology? So, where is all that? Dirt that is eroded over the that, that, that 400, 800 yeah. meters to start. It's in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's in the Mississippi Delta. We want um, it back. It dissolved away. I mean, it, most of the limestone parts, or, or, as they go through the system, would have just dissolved away. And then it's been reincorporated into the atmosphere, into the shells of sea life, into you know, plants. You know, you, you respirate. Um, the muds and the sands are in the Gulf of Mexico, or in this Gulf, or they're in the Gulf Coast of Hawaii. You know, that's where there's a big pile of sediment. Um, basically, if you drive to Paducah, you're right on the edge of it, and you turn south on the Rock Parkway and you go down, uh, just follow the river down. You're, you're not driving on bedrock again until you get to New Orleans. You know, and so um, the same thing when you get south. So pronounce that word again. Los, loose, less, huh? Uh, lus. 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 Okay. Yes. That's neat stuff. I've seen that there's down in western Kentucky, down around Hickman, there's some of that stuff, which is. Absolutely. Get it around Owensboro, uh -huh. Henderson, Uniontown. Lus. Um, it's windblown silt. Mm -hmm. um, it's real powdery. It's not much clay in it, not much sand in it. It's very well sorted because of the wind. Mm -hmm. um, you do get sand dunes associated with it, and so if you look around, you'll find where the sand is. Uh -huh. And then the dust just went dust ball and it was gone. Uh, of the clays. And so, but it's because of the frying grain nature, you get this electrostatic charge. And it's very unique, because if you take lust and you scrape it off vertically, 
it's unique among a lot of your Italian incentives because they will hold that vertical wall huh. for a long, long, long time until you set it back a little bit. And once the water runs across it, it can soak in a little bit. Yeah. It is like the most incredibly eros erodible stuff because <laughs> the water can move it. It can move clay and silt very easily, and it's harder to move the sand in those bigger pieces. But once you start it, it's gone. <laughs> and so um, in Vicksburg, during the Civil War, they built the, the residents of Vicksburg actually tunneled into the Lutz and made caves to hide from the Union bombardment. And it, uh -oh. was, it was fine. I mean, because this oh. shell did it, it just put you know, an air back inside. And, oh. You know, I'm sure there were a few instances of you know mountain collapse, getting yeah. collapse and stuff, but it was just the silt running across the front of it. The stuff is crazy stable. Um, it makes great fill. Um, there's a whole hill that was basically removed uh, down there on Spur. Filled back in all these new construction sites. So, so we're talking about there's land. There's a big argument about how to pronounce it. And oh, it's, there are people who will say I take your word for it because the German is worse. Uh. Okay. Well, we're talking about land use, land cover, land forms. Which comes first? <laughs> the land use is a human term. Uh -huh. That's about people. That comes after. Um, the land form is going to be based heavily on rock, somewhat on clay. Land cover, very dependent on somewhat on the soil. So I would say land form, land cover, land use. Okay. In that order. Okay. How I would, because the climate's changing, and so our current land cover isn't necessarily the land cover we used to have. Right, right. So I would say that the land forms, though, for a given rock type, <coughs> are more or less kind of predictable back through time. Uh, resistant rocks make steep slopes. Yeah. But then if you, depending on what your rock structure is, does that ever uh -huh. yeah. uh, determine what, what kind of vegetation you'll have on that? Sure, yeah. That's always that uh, if you go around That's here, if you disturb things, yeah. your recovery yeah. tree is going to be a seed. Uh, if you go out to eastern Kentucky okay. and disturb something in the same set, same, let's say we're, we're going to tear up a ridge top, doing something. Over here you'll get a cedar, over there you get a pine. But it's for the aspect matters too. Sure. Less so, but it matters. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the soil chemistry is going to have a big difference. Uh, I took a bunch of uh, I grow native perennials in my flower beds. Dug a bunch of them up, moved them out to that property I've got near Natural Bridge. Half of them took off. Be great. Half of them went. <laughs> Certainly appreciate you coming out and talking with us today. Yes. Well, I enjoyed it. Golf clap. Golf clap. Yes.